Welcome to Electrifying AI, a podcast series focusing on the energy industry, and in particular, the electric power industry. My name is Simon Hughes from SAS, and I'll be your host today and throughout this series. Let's just start by saying that we we live in a world of increasing brevity and informality, and we know that high-profile figures use Twitter to communicate, for instance, and and office workers don't wear suits these days, when they did when I first started working. Um, They don't even go to the office anymore, so now we're all stuck at home. Um, But for corporate brands like SaaS, um, white papers and deep, heavy content, they just don't reach audiences in the same way that kitten videos do and goat yoga videos do. So when we were scratching our heads and thinking about the huge changes that we see in the electric power industry and how could we communicate these, we realised that podcasting was the only way to go. And that way we hope we can keep it brief and informal, we can keep it candid and honest, not terribly scripted, and the hope being to deliver some sort of insightful and informed commentary. Now, we started with audio podcasts, and that was that was the scheme all along. But unfortunately for those watching, we landed on video podcasting, so now you have to look at us too. So shame. Sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. Um, and it's no good having a podcast without some domain expertise. And as you've probably deduced already, that's not me, I'm afraid, because I'm the industry novice here. And so for our industry expertise, I'm joined by Sal Gill, who recently joined SAS from the power industry. So welcome, Sal. Hey, Simon, and uh, hello to everybody listening to this. Good stuff. Um, Sal has been attempting, manfully, to school me about the energy industry over the last few weeks. And a poor student I am, it must be said. But the electric power industry, is clear to me, is in the midst of multiple transformations and disruptions. And so, Sal, when you made a career move to join SAS from the power industry... um, for those who don't know, SAS is a data and analytics company. And so not that many folk have made that journey from that industry. Many times people join SAS from what you might think of as traditional sort of data rich industries, such as banking and telco. So what then was it that drew you to SAS from the power industry? Great, great question, Simon. Let me um, go back to something that you mentioned earlier about the transformation. So we're witnessing multiple transformations in our in our space in the energy sector. We're seeing renewables take on as they've never done so before. Every quarter, we're, we've been noticing increase in, in in renewable technology deployments around the world. Um, similarly, we're seeing uh, electrification of sectors that were previously thought of um, you know far out when it came to making them electric. Um, so we have electric vehicles, not just electric vehicles. We have or electric vehicles that you and I may think of as the Teslas or the Nissan Leafs, et cetera. But even uh, the, the the semi-truck industry and, and a whole bunch of yeah. other um, uh, vehicles that could be electrified from the fleet world, uh, right. th- that in itself is a, is an, is a topic that, that uh, deserves a, a, a full episode. But there's okay. these many, many different transformations all occurring simultaneously. Now, to me, the, the key enabler behind making these transformations uh, a, a reality for the world that results in a, you know an economic boom, uh, new business models, new business opportunities, new even employment for, for people or even new industries. The key enabler is data analytics. And, and that's what has drawn me uh, to SaaS is that um, here I have the ability in my role as a as the senior manager for market innovation and, and digital strategy, to look at those um, those disruptions and and try to be the enablement engine uh, behind behind everything that's happening in our space. Very cool. Well, of course, uh, data analytics that's a that's a sweet spot for SaaS. That has been for for a long time, and uh, so you're you're very welcome. We are uh, we're very glad to have you along. Um, so what I do know is that through this series and through the coming weeks, Sal and I are going to explore explore a range of issues. Uh, but in this, our first episode, we're going to try and set the stage for the entire series. And we're going to touch briefly on a, a few of the major sort of themes and issues. And I guess for me, as a, as a novice here, I'm, I was interested in the sort of market and the, the, the political context first, Sal. Um, you sent me a few articles to read because I know nothing. Um, and I read some about, it was really about the big brands. And I guess I was surprised to see that sort of Lyft, the big sort of taxi company, the sort of rival of Uber, have committed to EVs, electric vehicles, by 2035. We had, I saw Microsoft 
committing to carbon neutrality, which which must be a, a big task uh, across their business. Also by the same thing, I saw something about UK government. I'm here in the UK, as you people may have deduced that from my accent. Um, I live in the UK and EV, electric vehicles and no internal combustion engines by, I think you said, 2035. So there's a lot of big brands making big, bold statements about their intent, sort of clean energy pursuits. They're not alone in this cell, are they? And, and, and what's behind it all? Simon, first, before I say anything else, maybe we should also talk about some of the tea wars that have been happening where I am and where you are. But we'll, well, we'll, we'll save that for another time. Let's skip over the 4th of <laughs> July and what you did to our tea. So, OK, so, uh, <laughs> yes, um, we have, we've, you know, every pretty much every other week, there's some announcement coming out either from Microsoft or from um, the other major tech players and not just them, even um, auto manufacturers, even uh, airline companies like Delta and others who are all making sustainability and carbon reduction a prime policy for their companies or prime um, objective for, for, for their companies uh, as, as they progress forward. So. Right. It used to be for a very long time uh, that we we used to thought, you know, the, the, the people used to think about climate change as some, you know, polar bear on a poster or, you know, some uh, Gen Z millennial episode that will, you know, not go anymore. away with no. time. It's, it's certainly Greta not the Thunberg, case anymore. Youth it, movement and all it, that. It, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And that 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 has changed and it has exponentially moved up the agenda for like, you know, like we discussed corporations, governments. Yes. And um, it's 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 not just, you know, moving up the agenda, but as it's doing that, it's actually creating a, a new economic opportunity for the world that it's it's never experienced before. So it's it's a very exciting time, a very promising time for our world. And um, all of this is becoming possible uh, for if, if I may talk about them for a little bit, uh, you know, because of a few certain factors that that are, you know, that are driving this forward. The, right. the primary factor in this is the cost of these technologies has come down significantly, which is why right. you are noticing more and more of these electric vehicles on the road, which is why when you know we land, we're not traveling anymore. But if you, for instance, right. land in Germany or, or some major uh, metropolitan area in the United States, you will see that there is this light reflecting back uh, from the houses, yeah. and that's solar yeah. panels. Um, yeah. So the, the costs coming down uh, has been uh, has accelerated the deployment of a lot of these technologies and, and creating an environment where we can actually think about getting to the sustainability goals that we have set. Now, on, on the goals part, I, I just wanted to uh, mention that a lot of times the industry has gone out and said, yeah, we will set, you know, 100 percent renewable target goals. By 2050, you know, some mid-century goals. And frankly yeah. speaking, all the people that are setting those may not even be in power back they then. may not be around, time. yes. Exactly. So um, it, it's an interesting goal. It's an interesting objective. I, I for one, am always into metrics. But the, the, there, yep. there's, a, there's a really interesting study that, was, that, that came out from UC Berkeley uh, maybe a month ago. And, and they mentioned that goal for achieving, I think it's like 90% of... Um, energy. Um, it may even be hundred percent, but it was around that number is not as far out of reach as we think today. So they ran some studies, actually very nice. detailed studies and looked at, you know, when is it realistically possible to get to these levels? And the, 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 the summary of that study was that given the fact that the costs have been coming down so quickly, they actually feel that the world or the United States could, um, become, uh, fully renewable by 2035, which is wow. a lot shorter than some of the targets. Uh, That's not so far away, is it? It's absolutely not. And add to the fact, you know, you were talking about the UK earlier and how, um, you know, many, many countries are creating targets or initiatives around electric vehicles, for instance. Mm, and yeah. uh, rightly so in the United Kingdom, the government there has announced that they will ban <laughs> fossil fuel uh, combustion engines by 2035. Yeah. I mean, that is remarkable. And, and that's, it's not just the UK, it's, it's several other, um, uh, countries oh, sure. in the European union that are, yeah. that are looking at the same approach. So very, very interesting times. Absolutely. Huge implications for, you know, the, 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 the big heavy industries that typically can generate and deliver power. Um, the infrastructures they have. I mean, even as, a, as, a, as an industry outsider, I can tell that that's a, that's a lot of kit. It's a lot of equipment. It's a lot of cost. 
yep. tied up and there's and on the brink of these very different sort of habits of consumption and uh, con- cons- all sorts of things are going to change um big implications for those those indus for those um monopoly providers i suppose i i tend to think of them as yeah the um that's a that's a great point simon so there, there, there is actually a lot of discussion and a lot of activities, in fact, happening in our space, which are almost um, in, in some ways acting as the, the digital disruption engines that other industries have seen. So we always, yeah. whenever we think of digital disruptions, you know, the, the, the quick things that come to mind are Netflix, Alibaba, Kareem, Uber, yeah. uh, all the major players. But that yeah. same wave of digital disruption is actually now hitting the shores of energy. And it has mm. the. I would argue that. That's interesting. It, I would argue that it even it even has more um, of an impact, uh, or digital disruption is going to make an even greater impact than it perhaps did for the other industries. And you know, if you think about the other spaces, right? They they had like built their forts over over a century, and you know, they were yeah. they defended themselves from many threats. Um, but they, you know, digital disruption came and, and basically you know altered the landscape and. The same, Big time. the same as you're saying is 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 happening in our space where, um, you know, for the first time, consumers are no longer just consumers of electricity. We just don't take electrons from the grid and use them to do dishes or um, mm. run our dishwashers or do washing machine loads. We we can actually now create our own electricity and do so in a very practical and affordable manner. And yep. um, that that is just one element of this uh, disruption that's happening. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 a very fluid We're, landscape that's changing very quickly. Yeah, and I guess that you know, that fundamentally changes the relationship between um, unempowered consumers who have traditionally just accepted <laughs> well they've plugged things in and they've expected them to work and they've just expected their bill to come in the post and. And what you're describing is a different world entirely where people start making their own power through all sorts of, you know, turbines and bits and bobs and solar panels and other things they have at that in their homes. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there, there's some also, um, there's been some interesting trends being observed as well. So mm. thanks to the pandemic, uh, yeah. we have now seen that renewables are uh, are actually in operation in, in greater quantity uh, and that's yeah. partly because we don't have the large commercial and industrial loads running like they, they typically did. No, they would have done, um, yes. And as a result, the, the conventional generation sources, which could have been fossil fuel driven, et cetera, uh, yeah. we're not seeing them as in play as much. So what we're seeing is that the composition that renewables make on a utilities network has actually increased. And uh, right. that is also giving raise to a lot of thoughts and ideas about what the future is going to look like. Um, another interesting mm. example is uh, uh, a research that came out from um, uh, another environmental agency, and they they identified that global carbon emissions actually came down eight um, percent. And this is not like over three months. I think this was over the first couple of weeks of the pandemic, right? And because we were all at home. And yeah, everyone we're, was we're all locked at home. Down. The, the the you know the carbon creating. Uh, vehicles or whatever no planes it may be. in the skies no cars there, there on the aren't road. that many of them running so yeah. it, it's it's giving uh it's giving a really interesting perspective to as i said what the world may look like post pandemic in which gotcha. we now actually have proof that you know we can we can get to those levels if we truly go ahead sit together and address some of these issues that have been causing uh, issues like global warming and, and climate change in fact i just before this uh starting this recording, I came across a really interesting article from Italy where um, the Italians are actually putting uh, paper coverings on uh, their glaciers because they're concerned that they're melting too quickly this summer. So I saw that. Uh, this, yes. is, this is real. It's happening. And so the, the pandemic and the fact that we're all here at home, uh, not traveling, not consuming um, power in the the way we used to is is a perhaps a glimpse of the clean energy future and it's, it's probably a it's going to boost the morale of people who uh, um, who who want to sort of progress the climate change agenda because hey look how wonderful it can be yeah and um, it's for for a long time a lot of these initiatives were being driven by policy and and right at that time policy was important and I mentioned that prices have come down, but something else has also happened. So 
at least in the United States, if we look at the treasury yield curves, um, or mm -hmm. let's say the bond market uh, to be to be more more generalist, yeah, we're looking at rates around ten year treasury yield. I think last time I checked, were around 0.65 or 067 yeah, percent. Um, really so that's high. a stable investment. People run to that in in cases of um, uh, global economic crisis and, and things as such. Now, yeah, yeah. what's happened is that the that the the renewables industry is able to generate uh long term rate of returns uh that are that are very very stable and and the reason why they're able to okay. do this is someone will build a renewable farm somewhere in the world and then they will negotiate on a power purchase agreement with the entity that will offtake that power and it's almost oh. sort of like a, a a stable return over a period of 10 15 20 years uh, as, lo as long as that thing is in existence yeah. Uh, so those returns. It's a revenue generating object. It's a it's a stream of revenue. Absolutely. So those returns, Simon, we're we're talking there for returns around you know um, upwards of upward single digits to some in some cases double digits in in, in the developing economies. Wow. So they're they're very fruitful returns, and because of that, a lot of pension funds, a lot of other investment vehicles or investment institutions oh, are yeah. now also looking at our industry, and that's driving a lot of capital infusion. Uh, into the space, which which wow. is also very exciting. Wow, wow, wow! That's that's huge, isn't it? And uh, it's it's like um, a whole series of factors are all coming together at, at sort of the same time to to apply all this uh, this this change to to the industry. It's coming from all over, you know, the technology and the uh, the popular movement and the. I don't know. Just the, as you say, the digitization and um, just the agility that the world moves at now is is going to really up make for a huge upheaval over the over the coming years amazing absolutely and um it's 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 going to create a future that um really will be very very exciting i know the times are tough right now i know uh, yeah, the the economic time, yeah. conditions are are challenging but our industry actually promises um, a future that can help uh get us out of uh, some of these economic times that we're in, and and do so in a, in a in a manner that is actually doing good to the world. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, Sal, look, we've touched on a, a few things there. I'm I'm also conscious of of the time that, that where and where we're up to in our, in our recording, and I know that we wanted to touch on the other episodes that we're going to discuss. Through, I mean, there's clearly a lot we have dis we can discuss. I can see that already. What other things are we going to touch on through the series? Would you say? So Simon, we've designed we have designed these series uh, with, with with a lot of thought, and, and we wanted to keep the topics uh, very exciting and very relevant to the uh, to the topics that are taking place in in, in our in our world today. So uh, we have a series of episodes that we're coming out with. Uh, the next one in particular, we're going to look at the pandemification of the electric sector, and yeah. and that we're going to basically evaluate and and, and observe what the uh, what the latest developments are due to the sure. impact of the pandemic uh, on, on on the global yeah. economies and, and the global electric industry. Uh, followed through yeah. that, we're going to get into diverse topics. Um, we're going to touch on what the the uh, what, what the new electric world order may look like in in the realm of renewables. Some of that we have talked about today. Sure. And um, a, a series of episodes will look at also uh, what's happening in markets such as automotive, the, the automotive sector. Uh, what are some of the developments yeah. there? And in the end, our, our vision is to wrap this up with a, a really interesting episode that we're calling the Holy Grail. Uh, so I'll, I'll take a pause <laughs> there and I'll, I'll let you guys, I'll, I'll keep We'll the leave that one hanging, shall we, yeah. so that our audience is intrigued enough to stay with us through the, through the entirety of this series. Yes, yes. Um, that sounds really cool. That sounds really cool. Well, listen, I look forward very much to discussing all this with you as a novice. Uh, an industry outsider it's been a it's been super interesting actually just to hear you talk and read some of the stuff you've sent me and just get a sense of what's what's just around the corner in many cases for this industry and i think as a coming from the world of data and analytics as i do it's interesting for me to observe how you know that that is going to unlock an awful lot of the change that was is coming through so fascinating stuff um thank you everyone for joining us today join us next time for our next episode which will be called electricity pandemified until then thank you uh, and goodbye from myself and, and from sal thank you everybody bye-bye thanks a lot take care bye-bye bye-bye